balance of power between the United States and China has long been a topic of global interest, as two of the world's superpowers with intricate ties of trade, diplomacy, and military might, the specter of conflict, however distant, warrants thorough contemplation. What can you do in case of an all-out war between these two nations? If a U.S.-China war starts, prioritizing communication, mobility, and extended emergency supplies is imperative. Creating an advanced emergency preparedness plan before problems strike by equipping yourself with water, food, stockpiling essential goods, solar-powered devices, a ready vehicle, and ensuring access to liquid cash are necessary. In this video, we will summarize the relations between these two superpowers. We will offer detailed guidance on emergency preparedness strategies, ensuring you're well-equipped should a conflict arise between the U.S. and China. Understanding the background and taking proactive steps are key to navigating potential challenges. A historical overview of the U.S. and China relations. The United States and China rank among the world's foremost economic powers and possess unparalleled military prowess. Since World War II, the U.S. has been at the forefront of global military dominance, exemplified by the nuclear strikes on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Through the years, the U.S. has consistently showcased its military strength, intervening in regions like the Middle East, Africa, South America, and Asia. The U.S. has solidified its military influence worldwide by establishing military bases and forging alliances with nations like those in NATO, Japan, and Taiwan. Conversely, China's rise has been both economic and military. Their investments in personnel and equipment have allowed them to rival the U.S. on multiple fronts. Geographically strategically placed, China also counts Russia, another major military force, among its allies. While the U.S. and China have long trod on the precipice of diplomatic conflict, mutual trade interests have often tempered their discord. China's persistent claims over Taiwan and the U.S. as commitment to defend its ally, combined with allegations of cyber attacks and other interference, maintain the looming possibility of a clash between these two superpowers. A war between the United States and China is likely to be protracted, focusing on cyber attacks and long-range missiles rather than deploying ground troops, at least at first, and is a strategy that may not be deemed viable. Such a conflict brings the risk of disrupted essential services, posing significant challenges for civilians. The necessity of preparedness, understanding the what-ifs. Given the immense firepower the United States and China possess, any confrontation could lead to massive destruction. In reality, a war between the United States and China could easily turn into World War III, with China's allies of Russia, North Korea, and Iran. A war of this magnitude could certainly turn ugly with chemical, bioweapons, or a nuclear confrontation. Any war between these countries is sure to bring drone attacks and a cyber threat from hacking by both countries as we are seeing in the Ukraine and Russia attempting to shut down the Ukrainian power grids. Being prepared for such a circumstance is crucial not only for natural disasters but any situation. Here are some recommendations in case the United States goes to war with China. Stocking the essentials. Your survival is paramount. Stock up on essentials that will sustain you over an extended period. This means the following. Water, non-perishable foods, personal hygiene products, first aid kits, crucial documents. Expect food production to plummet and supply chains to be affected, complicating the transport of basic goods. A national state of emergency could restrict movement, making it even harder for you to access supplies. To be thoroughly prepared, ensure enough food to last at least three months and ample water should normal sources become scarce. Remember, the quantity of supplies you'll need will largely depend depend on your family size. There are numerous foods that have long shelf lives, allowing you to store them for extended periods. Here's a list of non-perishable foods to consider for your emergency stockpile. Canned vegetables and fruits, canned meats, dried fruits and nuts, peanut butter, rice and pasta, instant noodles or soups, powdered milk or shelf-stable milk cartons, cereal and granola bars, canned or boxed broths and soups, canned beans and legumes, honey and syrups, crackers and hard bread, bottled water and juices, instant coffee and tea bags, shelf-stable sauces, canned stews and chili, dried herbs and spices, instant mashed potatoes. To maximize the utility of your stockpile, create an inventory list of all the items and their expiration dates. Review and update this list every 6 to 12 months, rotating and replacing items as they near their expiration. This ensures you always have fresh supplies on hand. Remember the importance of a can opener, it's an often overlooked simple tool, but without it, accessing many of these food items would be challenging. Always keep one readily available in your emergency kit. Medical supplies and knowledge. Medication becomes a lifeline during wartime. You need to consider that many hospitals may either be non-operational or overwhelmed, primarily attending to emergencies and war injuries. Disruptions in supply chains could further hinder medication production, making even basic drugs scarce. Ensure you have an ample supply, not just limited to first aid essentials, especially if someone falls ill. 
equip yourself with first aid skills and knowledge about medications. This will enable you to address minor ailments or injuries that might occur. You must draft a clear emergency response plan tailored to various scenarios. Such a plan will serve as your roadmap, guiding your actions and preventing panic and confusion. It'll instruct your family on when to use the bunker, the right moments to venture out, and situations where fleeing is more prudent than hiding. Remember, a well-thought-out emergency plan is often your best escape in dire situations. I recommend keeping a collection of emergency preparedness books and videos on hand. While in the throes of war, panic may ensue, and you might feel you don't have the time or clarity to reference them. However, it's always better to be prepared for any eventuality. Communication, the lifeline. Communication is a crucial element to prioritize during emergencies. Staying connected with your local community, friends, family, and the broader world is vital. One of the leading causes of panic and heightened stress during crises is the inability to communicate with loved ones, check in and ensure they're safe. This connectivity not only offers reassurance but also acts as a vital support system during trying times. During conflicts or wars, being informed about the evolving situation becomes essential for effective planning and decision-making. Reliable communication channels provide updates, insights, and warnings, enabling you to act promptly and seek help when needed. With up-to-date information, you can assess situations accurately and make decisions safeguarding you and your loved ones. Maintaining communication channels helps ease anxiety, as it keeps you informed about the well-being of friends and family. It serves as a lifeline, providing mental and emotional support during challenging times. Make sure you have emergency communication systems in place. These tools can be invaluable, allowing you to stay in touch with your loved ones during the war. Power backups and their importance. During wartime, there's a high chance power systems could be disrupted and devices hacked as each side seeks information from its adversary. To safeguard against system failures, you must have analog communication devices that don't solely depend on traditional power sources and can function for extended periods without a direct power connection. Solar-powered devices are a wise choice for such scenarios, and keeping a spare battery on hand can be invaluable. It's not just about communication, backup power and expandable solar generator starter kits are essential for cooking, staying warm during winter, lighting, and other necessities. Given the unpredictable duration of a conflict, a dependable power source becomes a linchpin of survival. Mobility, transportation, and financial security. Mobility is crucial in a war, especially one that might involve nuclear weapons, where swift movement from one area to another can be life-saving. To ensure you're ready for rapid relocation, keep your vehicle maintained and stocked with essential supplies. Additionally, having liquid cash on hand is vital, as it can facilitate quick purchases and any unexpected expenses. Banking systems and power grids will quickly become targets of Chinese cyber terrorists, and you could easily have no access to your money or bank accounts. Your vehicle doesn't just offer transportation, it's a potential lifeline. If the situation becomes dire, it can be your means of escaping dangerous zones or leaving the country to seek asylum in neighboring nations. Moreover, if a family member is injured, having immediate access to a vehicle can mean the difference between timely medical attention and unnecessary delay. In times of conflict, you can't rely on regular access to your banked assets. With financial institutions potentially shutting down, withdrawing money might become challenging. Cash becomes invaluable, not just for travel but also for procuring basic necessities. Without money or a source of income, even securing daily sustenance can become a struggle. Infrastructure, building safe havens. Should the US and China find themselves at war, your top priority is to have a bunker, probably an underground bunker capable of withstanding various intensities of blasts. This bunker must not only guard against explosive impacts, but also against chemical and bioweapons. Think of this bunker as your refuge, it'll likely be your home during hostile exchanges and needs to be fortified against all potential threats. The idea of bunkers goes back to the Cold War era, particularly the 1950s and 60s when fears of nuclear warfare led many people to build fallout shelters. While the image of a bunker is evocative of those times, they remain practical for several reasons. Protection from fallout, bunkers, especially if built underground, provide substantial protection against nuclear fallout, one of the most dangerous aspects of a nuclear detonation. Shelter from conventional attacks, while nuclear attacks are a major concern, bunkers can also provide safety against more conventional forms of warfare or airstrikes. Storage, bunkers can store emergency supplies, including food, water, and medicines, safe from outside contamination. If you don't have a bunker, here's how you can prepare for emergencies. Safe rooms in your home. Think about creating a reinforced room in your home. It'll offer a layer of protection from dangers like fallout. Community shelters. Larger shelters shared by your community might be more affordable and efficient. However, this works best if there's some warning before a crisis hits. Portable air filtration systems. With the threat of nuclear fallout comes radioactive dust. Portable HEPA air filters will help ensure the air inside your home remains safe to breathe. 
If necessary, plan to relocate, know where you could go if things get tough. Pack essentials in a go bag, and map out how to get to a safer place. The evolution of emergency preparedness. Emergency preparedness has evolved significantly from World Wars I and II because of technological advancements, lessons learned, and the changing nature of warfare. As we imagine a potential World War III scenario, personal emergency preparedness would need to adapt to the anticipated challenges of modern warfare. Here's how lessons from previous World Wars can be applied to personal preparedness for a potential World War III. Learning from history, the previous World Wars taught us the importance of preparation, from having enough food and water to the significance of having medical supplies on hand. Stockpiling essential supplies remains crucial. Anticipating modern threats, unlike the first two world wars, World War III might involve cyber attacks, electronic warfare, and possibly even biological warfare. Preparing for these requires offline backups of essential documents and data, secured communication devices or methods, personal protection equipment for potential biological or chemical threats, diversified skill sets. In World War I and World War II, individuals often learn various survival skills, from basic first aid to rationing and more. Modern preparedness would benefit from the following. Digital skills, like understanding online security. Basic medical training, especially for treating potential chemical or biological exposure. Knowledge of filtering and purifying water, given the potential for water sources to be compromised. Community collaboration, the spirit of unity and communal support was a hallmark of home front efforts in both world wars. For a potential World War III, communities might form neighborhood watch programs to ensure local security. Shared resources, like community bunkers or shelters, could be established. Training sessions on modern survival techniques could be organized. Mobility Evacuation was a reality for many during World War II, especially in Europe. In a modern context, a go bag with essentials ready for quick evacuation remains crucial. Knowledge of safe zones or regions to move to is important. Transportation means, like bicycles or fuel-efficient vehicles, can be vital if fuel supplies are disrupted. Psychological preparedness, the mental toll of the world wars was profound. In a modern conflict, access to information is key to reducing panic. Mental health resources should be available, such as counseling apps or helplines. Mindfulness and stress relief practices can be lifesavers in crisis situations. Sustainability Rationing was a part of life during World War II. Preparing for a sustainable lifestyle can help reduce the dependence on external supplies. Growing your own food, even in urban settings using vertical farming or hydroponics. Learning preservation techniques, like canning or pickling. 